thank you for the prayers that have been prayed. We thank you, God, for an opportunity to have worshipped you in giving. And now as we get into your word, we ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our hearts, that we will grow thereby and that you will be glorified in it. We thank you and we honor you for it all. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, with that being said, we are into our fifth episode of our series entitled Lent, Reflection, and Preparation. And what I have endeavored to do is uh, when we're dealing with a specific, whatever title or whatever subject we're talking about that day, I've been uh, endeavoring to have us reflect and then after reflecting to cause us to think about how we can prepare in order to operate in whatever that point is that we are operating on. So we are on episode five and episode five is one that I think is going to be uh, very adaptable to us uh, today. And our introduction says this, Jesus was tempted just as we are, but did not sin. Not only does he provide us with an example of how to respond to temptation, but he is the one who saves us from our sin. Jesus shows us how to respond to temptation by using scripture and also shows that he is the champion over the great tempter, Satan. And so we are going to spend some time talking about what they call the temptations of Jesus. Now, as we have gone through this journey of these five uh, episodes so far, the first episode was subtitled, The Victory is here. And we discussed how Jesus is the victor over death, which then provides us with victory over death. Episode number two, our subtitle was Return to the Origin. And we reflected back on God's intention from the beginning. In episode number three, we talked about what you looking for? What are you looking for when you fast? What are, are you looking for folks to feel sorry for you because you're not eating or because you've given up something? Or are you looking for an opportunity to spend more intimate time with God? Last week we talked about the right way is the best way. And we talked about how we need to Focus on doing it the way that God desires for us Amen. to get it done. Now today we, as you have already heard, that we're going to be talking about the temptation of Jesus. So our subtitle today is simply follow the example. Yes. Follow the example. Um, I know there are some people, you probably met them, that... Uh, they will see how somebody has done something and try to get different results by doing the thing that they saw done differently. But if you want to get the results, then the best way to get the results is to what? Do it the way that it was done. Okay. Especially if it's your first time. Sometimes we say, well, I think it would be better if I did it this way. It's better to say that and have already established that this is the process to get the result than to, in the middle of the process to get the result, you start changing stuff because that means you're not going to get the same result. When we were working with, uh, uh, man, I can't even think of the name of it right now, uh, Dave Ramsey's uh, 
Financial peace. Thank you, lovely. As, as we would work with financial peace, and we would say, this is the process that you do. Folks would come up to me and say, well, I want to do this, this, and this. I say, well, you can do whatever you want to, but if you want to get the results that over a million people done got, then why don't you stick with the way that's already been proven? Okay. Why don't you just follow the example that was set before us? I remember... Uh, we, had, we were helping, the first time that we taught it, we were doing uh, the uh, financial peace, and we were talking about uh, getting out of debt and paying cash for your car, and, and, all, and next thing I know, somebody comes up to me and they says, you know, financial peace has really been a help to me, and I said, oh, okay, cool. They said, I just bought me a new car, and I said, oh, okay. They said, yep, I got good financing on it. <laughs> I said, all right, okay. So, we have to have the mindset that the person that has, has done this is doing this in a way that has provided success. So if we want success, guess what? We have to do it the way that they did it. And then once we've done it the way that they did it, then we can add our extra, extra spices and seasonings to it. But we, first we need to make the dish before we start changing the dish to our liking or our, or our, our perceived liking. So let's talk about definitions. I know I, I, I got a big old soapbox today because so get ready. I think that's why we, we're going through what we're going through because I, I was like, man, this is about two hours worth of stuff. But anyway, first thing is Lent. Our first definition is Lent. Lent is a, a fast of 40 days beginning with Ash Wednesday and continuing till Easter, observed by some Christian churches as commemorative of the fast of our Savior. Reflection, the act of reflecting or turning or sending back or the state of being reflected. Preparation. Preparation is the act of preparing or fitting beforehand for a particular purpose, use, service, or condition. Next definition, temptation. The act of tempting or enticing to evil, seduction. Example, that which is to be followed or imitated as a model, a pattern, or copy. Now, now we got all that out the way. Let's get into the word for today. And I'm going to start this off with, 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 with something just uh, food for thought, and then we're going to go ahead and jump into the notes. We're going to start in Matthew, the third chapter, starting at the 13th verse. This is the English Standard Version. And it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. Behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And coming to rest on him, and behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Then, uh, let's continue to read, Matthew 4 and 1 says this, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him again, it is written, you should not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. 
And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that it will fall upon the good soul of our hearts in Jesus' name. This, the, now, most of the time we, we look at this and we look at this, the, the temptation. In fact, most of the, if you have little titles over each of your chapters, this one is called The Temptation of Jesus in the Wilderness. But the first temptation actually was in the third chapter. The first temptation was in the third chapter. Jesus comes up to John and he says, John, I need to be baptized. John says, no, you need to baptize me. That was the first temptation. Now, this temptation wasn't a hard one because, number one, Jesus' belly was full. He was walking in and feeling good and everything was going well. So it was just very easy for him to say, no, we, we have to do it this way so that all righteousness will be fulfilled. And John joined him and, and got with him and did it. And then we see that uh, God acknowledged that Jesus was his son and he sent the spirit like a dove upon Jesus. And so that we really don't talk about that temptation that much because it really, uh, it wasn't really. But then we get into the journey. The, it says that the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness. Is that what it say? And as it leads him in the wilderness, it has him walking around for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, if you go and sit somewhere for 40 days and 40 nights, you're going to be hungry. But if you're walking and, and burning more energy, then guess what? You're really going to be hungry. And after that time period, after him and the Spirit has been in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, then the tempter came. And we have to realize that the Bible tells us in Hebrews that he was in all manners tempted like we were, except he did it without sin. So Jesus understands what temptation is like. Let me put a little quick little note right there. I'm, every one of us has something that tempts us. Again, if you don't like Brussels sprouts, we can't tempt you with Brussels sprouts. As y'all can tell, I really love Brussels sprouts. I'm, I am lying. Uh, because it has to be something that entices you, something that you want, something that you desire in order for it to be a temptation. So we have to recognize what it is that causes us to feel enticed. Now, I want to also take a, a moment to just mention that sometimes the temptation is not something that is outside of us. Sometimes the temptation is something that is within us. And what I mean by that, sometimes the temptation is our self-talk to not do something. Y'all catch that one tomorrow. Sometimes our temptation is us talking to ourselves and telling ourselves that we can't do something. And we have to realize that we are actually tempting ourselves to be seduced and then coming to a point whereby we are non-functional, 
not dysfunctional, non-functional. You're not even functioning. Not functioning in a, not dysfunctional, functioning in a bad way, but not functioning at all. That we have become stagnant. So, but Jesus is saying that if you walk in me, if you realize that in me, that I can give you victory over whatever temptation, whether it's external or internal, we can walk in victory. <clears throat> and so the first thing that we notice is that Jesus has been outside walking through the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights. Belly is probably not grumbling. It's probably roaring like a lion. And then the tempter comes, and the first thing that he tempts him with is turn these stones into bread. Yes. Now we sit back and say, that ain't tempting. But let's say that the temptation for you is don't eat for three days. Fast for three days. And the second day you go into work and the person said they was having a special at Krispy Kreme and bring in four boxes of donuts. And it's the end of the day and you're cleaning up and getting ready to go home for the day. And as you get ready to go for the day, you see a whole box of 12 still sitting there. And you sit there and say, man. And you start wondering or reimagining how those donuts would taste. You know, if you put them in the microwave for seven seconds, it will make it just as it has come out of the oven. Y'all didn't know that. I'm trying to get you some education. So you realize that that is a temptation to you. Why? Because you have a desire to have something in your belly. But you have to make the decision whether you want to do it or not. That's why I didn't continue on with that because some of you already done ate half the box already. So as we look at what he is going through, we see that Satan attacks him in different aspects of his life because Satan knows that one of these three areas, Jesus is going to fall. Why? Because he is in human flesh, and because he is in human flesh, he has one of these three areas that he is going to trip up. Why? Because in 1 John, the second chapter, starting at the 15th verse, it says this, it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, and the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. And so we see in this is that God has done a great and mighty thing. He is operating in a way that shows us that there are desires that come against us, that have come to us, that are trying to pull us away whether it's the desire of the flesh, whether it's the desires of something we see, whether it's the desire of pride, whichever one that is trying to pull on us, it is going to pull on us. But if we are in the Father and not of the world, we can overcome it. So it's not that we are not susceptible, it's just that we have to be cognizant of what we are susceptible to. And so as we are looking at how Jesus is maneuvering in there, the thing that we notice is that Jesus put the word on it. When he puts the word on it, it causes the devil to now not want to continue down that path. 
So he says, make these breads and stones. He says, man don't live by bread alone, but he lives off of every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so the devil says, okay, all right, you want to you throw some word on it? So the second time, guess what happened? They take him to this, to a high, to this high place, and he decides, all right, Jesus, jump off of this building right here. Because the word says mm-hmm. okay. yes. <laughs> that his angels will catch you, that they will grab you, that lest you dash your foot against a stone so you can go ahead and jump. See, we have to realize that people will misinterpret, misrepresent the word of God in order to manipulate people into doing what they want. That's why it's important for you to know the Bible for yourself. Like the little girl said, worry about yourself. We got to be involved ourselves. I do not want you to just depend on what I'm saying on Sunday to you or Tuesday or Thursday during Bible studies. I want you to find out for yourself. Because when the enemy throws that scripture out there, and tries to mislead you, you know how to rightly divide the word yes. and provide the proper response. So it, 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 it is mandatory for us to understand what the word of God is and what the word of God says and the proper interpretation of the word that we will take things in context so that we can utilize it perfectly. If we do not, then it's like, it's as if we are an unskilled swordsman and that we are in the middle of a battle, and if you're not skilled, you're not only going to hurt your, might hurt your opponent, but you'll probably hurt yourself more so because you don't know how to properly use the sword. And the Bible is considered a two-edged sword, and it can be used both to fight the enemy, but it can also end up damaging someone around you that's supposed to be on your side if you don't use it with skill. That's why it's important for us to rightly divide, rightly interpret, rightly read the word of God and get the right understanding. Because in all our getting, we have to get an understanding. So we looked at the first where he worked on the the desire of the flesh. Then we looked at the second where he looked at the, uh, the desire of the eyes. And now, the pride of life. He takes Jesus to a point where he says, Jesus, this is all the nations of the world. This is all their capabilities. And because of who I am, I will give you the power of all these nations. All I need you to do is To bow to me. And the problem is the tempter didn't read the whole story. And so he thought he had something going on. He thought he could say and look and say, Jesus, don't you want to be in charge? No, I don't want to be in charge because I am in charge. It's not a want to be because I'm already in charge. What you didn't know was that I'm in charge and you just working. (laughs) I've seen how some people, well, you know what? Just came to my mind. There was a a, a thing, a thing on television that I, I would watch. Infrequently, but I, I liked it because it was called Undercover Boss. And Undercover Boss, what the, pro, what the, 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 the theme of the, the show was, that the owner of a company would dress up and disguise himself and go in as an entry-level worker so that he could better understand his company. Now, these people would be complaining and, and, and you know, some would be encouraging, and, you know, but sometimes... We need to realize that we should treat everyone with dignity and respect. 
But most of all, we got to watch our mouth. Yes, yes. Because you don't know who you may be complaining to or who you may be talking about. Right. And so as we have looked so far, we see how John inadvertently tried to tempt Jesus. And Jesus was able to put that to the side. The tempter comes and he tempts him with uh, the desires of the flesh. Puts that to the side. He tempts him with the desires of the eyes. Puts that to the side. And now we got this last one. The pride of life. Pride has the ability to cause us to not see what is right in front of us. Pride has the ability to cause us to look past everything that's telling us contrary to what we believe is actually happening. Pride is so deceptive that it will talk to you to in such a way that you won't even believe yourself when you're trying to correct yourself. Pride is one of the greatest attributes that the enemy has in his arsenal against us. Another quick side note just came to my mind. It wasn't so much the fact in the garden that they did wrong, but he told them that you will be just like God. And they want, they say, yeah, I'd, I'd like to be like God. And so the pride of life can sneak in there on you when you ain't even paying attention. That's why we have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. So what we want to finalize this with is that when we are going through temptation, it's going to come from one of these three directions. It's going to come at us so that it can either something that uh, 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 is a desire of our flesh, mm -hmm. something is a desire of our eyes, or something that deals with our pride. And that is why it's very important for us to understand what the word of God says as we submit to God, as we take our authority and make our authority, our power subject to God, then we can resist the devil and then the devil will flee from us. But we have to realize that these three things are all around us. These three things are pulling on us at all times and when it hits us in the right spot, we got to be able to submit ourselves, take our authority and subject it to the word of God. But that tells me one thing that we need to do. We need to be involved with the word of God. And so when we become involved with the Word of God, when we study the Word of God, when we understand the Word of God, when we comprehend the Word of God, it then becomes easier for us to submit to the Word of God so then the tempter can't come in and pull us to the side. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that he won't try, but it will happen in the same manner that it happened with Jesus in that Jesus was able to say, the Word of God says this. Okay. And then in the end, once Jesus got tired of him, he just said, hey dude, go on somewhere. And then when he had the victory, it says that the angels came and ministered to him. 
Now, in my mind, I was like, the, the angels must have been like Uber or something. I know it don't say that. I'm just saying. They, they brought him something to eat, and they were able to refresh him and, and to celebrate him. And if we look at the two situations, the temptation before that we were talking about, the temptation he went through with John, uh, uh, God said this. God did this. God said he's ready to start going through the temptation process. Once he goes through the temptation process, God sends the ministering angels down because God had already approved of him and said he's going to be okay. I don't need to get involved because he's going to be okay. The angels will go down and get everything squared away because he's got it. He's victorious. And most of all, he has set an example for us to follow. When temptation comes, we follow the example of using the word of God as our just. If it does not, if we cannot confirm it with the word, we will make sure that it is something that we are not doing. If God did not say that we can do it, then we should not be doing it. Okay. And so we want to grab hold of the fact that we want to do this, everything that we do, according to the word Amen. of God that has been rightly divided so that we can give God the glory and that the angels will come and minister to us and refresh us and restore us because of our obedience to God. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, though, we got an issue. The issue is that in order for us to operate and walk in this word, we have to have a relationship with God. In order to get that relationship with God, you have to have Jesus in your life. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. <laughs> Romans 10 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have to have made the commitment to serve God. Knowing that you cannot do anything of your own, but that you have to depend on God to operate in your behalf. And Jesus is the conduit by which we are connected to God. He says, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. So if you want to be able to overcome the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride of life. You must be connected to the source that gives you the power. In order to connect to that source that will give you the power, you have to accept Jesus into your life. Yes. If you have made that decision today to accept Christ in your life, I want you to let us know by emailing us at info at godshousecc.com. We will do everything within our ability to assist you along this journey of becoming more like Jesus. Because that is very important to your life. To be more like Jesus. And we would also like to say to you this. That this is not an individual event. This is a team sport. Where we all come together and help one another along this journey. This, you don't fight this by yourself. We do it all together because that, how, that is how God has designed it. I heard somebody say that even the Lone Ranger had Tonto. So everybody's got to have somebody. Friends and family, with that being said, episode number five is done. Follow the example Grab hold of this word. Grab hold of the word of God so it will enable you to overcome the enemy and all his devices. And you will be successful, victorious, and a conqueror in all things. 
Well, until next week, God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name.